The latest school closures across our area, including which schools are doing a delayed start today. That's coming up in our next half hour. Spurs starting a five game road trip out east. We'll have highlights from their first matchup over in Atlanta. And checking Transguide, we are seeing uh, pretty good roads conditions out there right now. 1604 at Pat Booker. More after this. Rise and shine. It's 6 a.m. 19 degrees out there. Very cold. I'm a lucky girl. My husband warmed up the vehicle before I stepped into it, so I got to step into a nice, toasty car this morning. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Now, keep in mind, that was an upgrade when Steph bought it. It's part of the concierge package. <laughs> <laughs> to have your husband go warm up your right, car. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Sign here, please. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, we should all be so lucky. And Luis is a sweet guy. That's yeah. for sure. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> it's six o'clock on your Tuesday, January 16th. And it's feeling like mid-January up in the northern part of the country yes. versus here, right? Absolutely. Temperatures that we're not used to here. Mm -hmm. uh, but at least, um, I was going to say, at least there's not, you know, that rain out there. Oh, yeah. Enjoying it, that. it is dry. <laughs> By the way, Luis uh, just got every husband out there mad at him right now. Because <laughs> all of us going... Stephanie's husband warmed the car up for him. So, uh -huh. yeah, you do want to warm the car up uh, this morning. It is definitely cold out there. We got a lot of clear skies. We were talking about how there's no rain. There's the uh, the planet Venus, that little dot right up there. It's going to be a spectacular sunrise this morning. Uh, if you're inside looking out, we are at 19 right now. 17 Helotus, Ball Verde, 15 Kerrville and Comfort, 12 still at Lost Maples. Then you factor in the wind chill. Actually, the wind chill is up a little bit. Uh, even though temperatures have dropped down, so maybe the wind is not quite as strong out there. But I mean, still, you got a wind chill of nine, three burning stage, zero now at Kerrville and Lost Maples. And wind chills are definitely going to be an issue throughout the rest of the morning. These winds are coming in here out of the north at. Uh, well, now eight miles per hour. So like I said, settled ever so slightly. Still 14 at Kerrville and New Braunfels. And then you got some wind gusts there. 24 at Randolph, 15 at Canyon Lake, 19 at Lost Maple. So it will be breezier throughout the rest of the morning. Wind chill advisory is remain in effect. And even though the wind is going to be settling somewhat, I mean, we'll still have a breeze out there this afternoon. Still have wind chill advisories through 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. And it's going to be every bit as cold. So we still have the hard freeze warnings. That's all of the area up until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. So we're in store for another brutally cold start to the day tomorrow. Mountain Cedar and Mold are both on the low side. The updated count, of course, later on this morning. And temperatures, well, they're not going to warm up that much, although we will finally make it just above freezing by early this afternoon. So that'll be a uh, little more than 48 hours that officially here in town we have been below freezing. We only made it to 29 yesterday. Didn't get any of those little breaks in the clouds, unfortunately. 35 for a high temperature today. Still well below normal by almost 30 degrees. And then once the sun goes down tonight, another it's going to cool off quickly and another very cold start tomorrow. Another front down the road. Rain chances, those two aren't going to be coming at the same time, and maybe an extended rain period, so that's encouraging. We'll talk about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ, still got some problems out there? All right, Mike. Actually, things are looking pretty good, a lot better than our 5 o'clock hour. Had a couple of things pop up over the past hour or so, but it looks like we are clearing things out in uh, many parts of the city. So 1604, Pat Booker, you see traffic moving along pretty smooth in that direction there. 1604 at Shanefield on the far west side. We have traffic, our drivers moving along through that area pretty well there as well. This has been the biggest thing that we've been following over the past uh, 30 minutes or so, but it looks like this is potentially cleared out. So that's good news. We had this crash there westbound Loop 410 at Airport Boulevard, so we are in the clear there. The rest of the city, we had another incident there at Fredericksburg Road at Woodlawn Avenue, uh, where the frontage road was blocked for a little bit, but I just saw it looked like the flares have uh, cleared out in that area there, so that frontage road and that intersection should be good to go right now. So one more quick look here at Transguide. Again, the biggest thing that we've been talking about throughout our five o'clock hour. If you're not with us, was just that uh, you definitely don't want to turn on the sprinklers today. Uh, it's still very cold outside, so a lot of that water runoff can freeze over on sidewalks, surface roads, neighborhood roads, and uh, you know, for people in and around those areas walking, you know, back and forth, uh, definitely want to make sure that they're fine and safe. Also, irrigation systems as well for businesses, make sure that those have been shut off as well. Kind of dangerous conditions out there when it comes to the water runoff, but everything on the roadways looking pretty good right now. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys.
Thank you, RJ. And we have been watching notifications from local school districts about any delays or closures. You can find that list by scanning this QR code on your screen right now, or you can go over to KSET.com. And so far, we're hearing that Burbank High School, Three Rivers, Cadiz of Springs, Goliad, and Blanco ISDs will be closed today. So Edgewood ISD, Stratford Elementary, is also closed this morning. And Harper, Comfort, Catula, and Fredericksburg ISDs are just a few of the districts on a delayed start. So we're going to continue to keep track of any closures or delays that might come in. This morning, ERCOT is once again asking people to try to conserve electricity. The state's power regulator says they are expecting tight grid conditions today due to the freezing temperatures. They're asking people to conserve electricity between now, which was 6 o'clock this morning, and 9 this morning. ERCOT is also expecting similar grid conditions tomorrow. Looking ahead this Thursday, the justice is expected to release its critical incident report on the shooting at Robb Elementary. That's according to the Uvalde CISD superintendent. So she told the district school board about it at last night's regular meeting. The report will come over 18 months after the shooting on May 24th, 2022. Now, this days after the shooting, the Justice Department said it would review the law enforcement response. At the time, the DOJ said its goal was to, quote, provide an independent account of law enforcement actions and responses that day and to identify lessons learned and best practices to help first responders prepare for and respond to active shooter events, end quote. Good morning headlines. Snow from Washington, D.C. to New York and Boston. And as Mike said earlier, brutal life-threatening cold across Texas and the south. In the Midwest, wind chills could drop as low as 45 degrees below zero this morning. Even down in Brownsville, it could feel like 10 below. Across the south, drivers are struggling to stay on the road. It's snow, sleet, and icy conditions. They're keeping over 1 million students home today. Schools from Chicago and Detroit to Denver, Dallas, and Houston are closed. Well, the Iowa caucus has wrapped up with a big win for former President Donald Trump in his path towards the Republican presidential nomination. As ABC's M. Win reports, Ron DeSantis clinched second place, just barely edging out Nikki Haley. In Iowa, a resounding win for Donald Trump, who smashed a record for his wide margin of victory. The former president, with a projected win after just 30 minutes, receiving more than 51 percent of the vote, tightening his grip on the 2024 Republican presidential nomination. What a turnout, what a crowd. And I really think this is time now for everybody our country to come together. Governor Ron DeSantis finishing in a distant second with about 21 percent of the vote after rallying in all 99 counties. <laughs> DeSantis sounding triumphant for edging Haley in the GOP contest for second. Because of your support, in spite of all of that that they threw at us, everyone against us, we've got our ticket punched out of Iowa. Behind DeSantis by just 2%, former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley, who called her third place finish a testament to the momentum she's been gaining. I can safely say tonight, Iowa made this Republican primary a two person race. And despite the bitter sub zero temperatures, entrance polls show who turned out to support Trump in the state. One question asking, do you think that Joe Biden legitimately won the presidency in 2020? 66 percent saying no. Quite overwhelmingly, two thirds uh, believing something that is flatly untrue. This is Trump's party. They believe what he says. Entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy announced he's dropping out of the race and backing Trump. President Joe Biden fundraising off of Trump's victory in Iowa, saying this election was always going to be you and me versus extreme MAGA Republicans. Candidates now have their sights set on New Hampshire's primary just one week away. A recent poll shows Nikki Haley within striking distance of Trump there. M1 ABC News, Des Moines, Iowa. In other news this morning, January is National Blood Donor Month, and you can help save lives with KSAT Community and University Health. The blood supply is critically low, and just one donation could help up to three patients in need. If you want to donate for the first time, or if you're a pro, just visit our website, KSA.com, for how to schedule your donation. 19 degrees at nine minutes past the hour. And still to come, the Houston Texans finally know who they're playing this weekend in the divisional roundup of playoffs. Preview of that matchup, that's actually a rematch. And after the break, the Spurs on a five-game road trip. Highlights from their game with the Hawks. And who's next tomorrow night?
I'm looking out there with a live cam, it's very cold still, 19 degrees, a, a very cold start for anyone's day, but especially those kiddos who are going back to school today. So bundle up if you are going back to school. We'll be right back. Six thirteen. Welcome back in morning sports. Spurs open up a five game road trip in Atlanta yesterday afternoon. The story of the first half. Hawks star Trey Young making it rain triples inside State Farm Arena. Atlanta up 27 when Young pulls up from the logo and sinks it. Second half, Spurs rookie Victor Wimbenyama stole the spotlight off the transition. Wimby gets up for the alley-oop slam. San Antonio mounting a comeback. It's Wimby driving to the basket, finishes with a one-handed jam. Spurs managed to get within six points of the Hawks, but that early hole was too much to climb out of. Spurs dropped the first one on the road, 109-99. Because of that slow start, Coach Greg Popovich had to shake things up, and here's what Wimby had to say about it. We had probably the, the worst first, first half we've had in, uh, so far, and you know he. This is also the, why he he changed the starting lineup in the second half. He wanted to, you know, to to put players he could trust to give 100% you know, on the court and to kind of show us also the regular starters, you know, how how we should have been, you know, starting the game. Spurs head to Boston next to face the Celtics tomorrow night at 6:30. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. Well, the Houston Texans are set for the divisional round in the playoffs against one of the favorites to win this year's Super Bowl. They're on the road to Baltimore to take on the Ravens. Texans advanced after a huge 45-14 dismantling of the Cleveland Browns. Head coach D'Amico Ryans reflected on the Texans' season opening loss to Baltimore. That final score, 25-9, Ravens. Tough place to play, right? Rookie quarterback, right? New, new team, new star going out to Baltimore. You look up. I remember going in at halftime and like, man, we were right there, right? going against a really tough team. We were right there, a uh, really tight game, and it kind of, you know, they took it away in the second half. They've done an outstanding job, Baltimore, with their defense. I think they've been probably the most consistent defense throughout the entire year. So mark your calendars for Saturday afternoon. Houston will play top seed Baltimore. January 20th at 3.30 p.m. right here on ABC and KSAT 12. If the Texans score an upset, they would play either the Chiefs or the Bills in the AFC title game. And I hope they do it. I hope they do it. It'd be very interesting. <laughs> Time now, 6.15. Uh, I didn't see any problems on this camera, but let's go ahead and check in with RJ Marquez. Yeah, guys, uh, you know what? You could have never, I would have never imagined that the Texans would be the last uh, team from the Lone Star State standing in the playoffs, but uh, here we are. <laughs> Very interesting stuff out there. Okay, so taking a look at Trans Guide, Lou Fortin, Blanco, you see traffic moving pretty good. As Stephanie just mentioned, uh, we're not seeing anything major right now on the road, so that's good news. We had cleared out a couple of incidents that we saw over the past hour or so. As you see from inbound traffic times, we have some pretty good times times here for anyone that's making their way into the city of San Antonio from some of our uh, surrounding areas. It looks like, uh, you know, kind of our normal sort of traffic heading in from places like Lavernia, Castorville, New Braunfels, especially, of course, up there. Hill Country area saw a little bit of activity uh, yesterday with some of these uh, some of these highways and uh, interstates uh, about outbound traffic times. It's always a little bit different here. So seeing a little bit of delays there, Castorville, 35 minutes, Lavernia, 27 minutes. Uh, if you're heading out to Floresville right now, it's going to be 25 minutes, but uh, something that I've uh, been kind of just monitoring right now is that even though not in our may in a, not in our metro area, but still there is a uh, textile is still reporting some light ice accumulation. Uh, further southeast of uh, Floresville, if you're headed towards uh, Goliad, Victoria, those types of uh, areas and cities. So just kind of keep that in mind if you have to head out and um, one other thing to kind of just let you know about uh, yesterday when I was on the phone with Texas, they said, you know what, even though we're not anticipating anything uh, like we saw yesterday on the roads, it's always a good idea to just be careful on uh, bridges and overpasses. You never know that uh, maybe some of that ice kind of stuck around there, some black ice. Kind of sneaky spots there for our drivers, tricky and, spots. And hats off to Texas again, working some major yes. OT. It looked like they even put down fresh brine. 
late last night or yeah. in the overnight hours. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I took uh, the neighborhood roads just to be safe, but I have the luxury of being able to do that. Some people have to go on the highway. Yeah, and you know, just be, it's still very cold out there. A lot of the, the ice did, uh, as we say, some made yesterday and the wind helped out, but yeah, you gotta, you gotta definitely, uh, definitely watch it. So um, it is beautiful though, in certain situations, you know, we didn't have a whole lot of it to cause a lot of damage to trees with all that extra weight on there. Um, and this was, yeah, it just looks so pretty. Def you know, definitely a winter wonderland out there in Canyon Lake. Thank you so very much for the KSAC Connect picture. And appreciate all the folks that sent in KSAC Connect pictures to help us tell the story of what's going on, what was going on yesterday, um, as far as you know, some of the, the iced over windshields, things like that. And keep those pictures coming as well. All right, looking off to the east, we've got a lot of clear skies. The planet Venus is now stuck behind that banner right there, but it's gonna be a good looking sunrise this morning. Again, wind chill temperatures. This you know, is not a way to make it seem colder than it is. And this is what it actually feels like to your body. And we are in negative numbers right now out there in Lost Maples, zero Kerrville, three Bernie Stage, and nine out there at the airport. So you really, really have to watch it. Limit your time outside as much as possible. So I know kids waiting at the bus stop, um, bundle them up, or if you can maybe wait a little bit longer to take them to the, uh, the bus stop so they're not sitting outside too much. Obviously, uh, we got a lot of clear skies, maybe one or two clouds well up there to the north. The huge system that brought this cold air here, and you can see this huge counterclockwise rotation. That's that mass of Arctic air sitting up there just to the uh, the south of Hudson Bay, the center of it. Still a lot of snow off to the east, a lot of lake effect snow over here and yeah, mess off the east coast. So if you got any travel plans, definitely check ahead because there may be some delays uh, due to all that inclement weather off there to the east. So what's going to be happening is all that gets on out of here. We get a little break in the action. Then we're going to start to see a chance for some rain to come in here. And what's nice and what's very encouraging is the fact that it looks like at least rain chances will be sticking around for a while. So later on Sunday, and I know I've mentioned before, there's another front moving through Thursday into Friday. That comes through dry. That cold air gets on out of here before this moves on in. So later on Sunday, chance for some rain. Again, broad brush, long range computer model, but that chance does exist. This will be the case into Monday, as well as then Monday night, so overnight, maybe some uh, thunderstorms mixed in as well. And rain chances sticking around Tuesday and looking at some of the long, long range computer models going through much of next week, some rain chances sticking around here. So again, still a week away, a lot can change between now and then, but it's a really encouraging forecast as far as more rain. Today, 35 degrees, so we'll just barely make it above freezing and then back down to 19 again tomorrow. We won't have stronger winds tomorrow morning, but it's still going to be brutally cold out there. 45 in the afternoon. We stay above freezing Thursday. The next front moves through Friday. Temperatures will only get down below freezing Saturday morning. Uh, touch freezing in the hill country Friday morning. No moisture associated with that though. Uh, 46 on Saturday and then cold start Sunday get up to 51, then the chance of rain moves in here and we'll have those rain chances throughout next week. So no more of what we had yesterday at least in this forecast. That is very good news. Mm -hmm. and we're glad to see that, you know, pass. <laughs> yes. And, it, you know, every year, at least once or twice, yes. we get those little bouts with ice. So. Yes. Thank you, Mike. Maybe Valentine's Day will actually be warm this year. <laughs> It'd be a strange we'll thing, but we'll see. 621, 19 degrees. And just ahead, new video from the avalanche at a Tahoe ski resort shows skiers being swept away as people on the ski lift warn others. That is next in your GMA First Look. Kate made progress with her mental health, but her medication caused unintentional movements in her face, hands, and feet called tardive dyskinesia, or TD. So her doctor prescribed Osteto XR, a once daily TD treatment for adults. Osteto XR significantly reduced Kate's TD movements. Some people saw a response as early as two weeks. With Osteto XR, Kate can stay on her mental health meds. Oh, hi, buddy. Osteto XR can cause depression, suicidal thoughts, or actions in patients with Huntington's disease. Pay close attention to and call your doctor if you become depressed, have sudden changes in mood, or have suicidal thoughts. Don't take if you have liver problems, are taking reserpine, tetrabenazine, or valbenazine. Osteto XR may cause irregular or fast heartbeat or abnormal movements. Seek help for fever, stiff muscles, problems thinking, or sweating. Common side effects include inflammation of the nose and throat, insomnia, and sleepiness. 
Ask your doctor for Osteto XR. In this morning's GMA First Look, urgent avalanche warning. <laughs> this video taken in Palisade Tahoe, capturing a skier being swept away as people on a ski lift warn others. These are the types of avalanches that catch, carry, and kill people. Avalanche forecasters sounding the alarm. Conditions ripe for dangerous snow slides across the west. Overnight, GMA speaking to the director of the National Avalanche Center. We're coming out of that dry period into a pretty active, stormy, and cold uh, wetter period. And when you do that, you end up with a layering where you have very weak snow below stronger, deeper snow. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more on these hair-triggering avalanches and what skiers and snowboarders need to know to stay safe. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. In your morning consumer headlines, Apple ditching its blood oxygen feature on Series 9 and Apple Ultra 2 watches. Both were banned in the U.S. last year due to a patent dispute, which Apple lost. The move will allow the watches to be sold across America. Microsoft's new Copilot Pro will now provide access to artificial intelligence powered features inside Office apps, including Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. The cost for the monthly subscription plan is about $20 a month. The program also offers priority access to Microsoft's latest open AI models and other features. Uber is reportedly shutting down Drizzly, the alcohol delivery service the company bought three years ago for over a billion dollars. Uber says it's closing the company to focus on its core Uber Eats strategy. And the time now, 626 and 18 degrees for now. It may be really cold, but right now the roads are looking great around town. They are dry. Looking at some of the camera shots from around town. If anything pops up, we'll talk to RJ a little bit later on. Outside with live cam. A lot of us are not used to temperatures this cold with uh, wind chills sometimes down in the single digit. The trick is to wear layers and you gotta have some sort of hat or hood and that'll keep all that, that heat in your head. Yes, yeah, very, very cold out there. Good morning at 630 on Tuesday, January 16th. And if you got kiddos, definitely keep that in mind. You know, the, the hoodies, the hats, or both. And, and from someone who grew up in Michigan, I'm sure you can attest to the fact that some sort of knit hat helps a lot, right, Mike? Oh, yeah. I mean, because think of all the blood in your head, too. But also, if you have a scarf, because, mm -hmm. I mean, just that, that wind, you know, in these cold temperatures, it's, it almost stings when it's hitting you. It's like a, I said, like a slap in the face, kind of like. So, no, 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 no. We're talking about the weather here. So, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, bundle up, and you're going to need to bundle up again tomorrow. We won't have the wind, as strong a wind tomorrow, but it's going to be every bit as cold. And uh, right now, as you can see, maybe a little bit of the glow of the sunrise because we are going to have a, we've got clear skies out there right now. Whole different story as far as that's concerned, uh, comparing the the lousy weather we had yesterday, all the, the freezing rain and everything, but it is clear out there, so just plain old cold. 19, however, with the wind out of the north, we do have a wind chill to deal with, as we were talking about, and the dew point, the air is just bone dry, and you can feel just how dry the air is when you step outside. Actual temperatures, um, most everybody is in the teens right now, just a few locations still in the 20s. Then you factor in that wind, and look at that single digits. It even feels like two below right now in Lost Maple. So we are going to have some areas in parts of the hill country where we continue to have negative numbers as far as what it feels like. Wind is out of the north, 10, 15 miles per hour. And then as far as the wind chills or wind gusts, I should say, 18 at Bernie stage, 20 there at Balverde. So it's going to be windier the first portion of the day. Wind is going to be not as strong. Still a decent breeze this afternoon. So we still have wind chill advisories in effect up until 10 o'clock tomorrow. 
tomorrow morning. And like I said, even though it's not going to be as windy, a little bit of a breeze knocks that wind chill down. Doesn't take much. And also the hard freeze warning remains in effect up until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. So we'll be back down in the teens. Mountain Cedar mold are both on the low side. The updated count is going to come out later on. Brutal wind chills, sunny above freezing finally. So it will be because we dropped down below freezing late Sunday morning. That's officially here in town. So we're looking at a good 40, 50 hours that temperatures have will have stayed below freezing. Frigid tomorrow morning, then sunny. We get up into the 40s. Thursday, we stay above freezing here in town. It'll be cold, though, mid 30s and freezing in the hill country. Then another front moves through here Friday. There will not be any moisture associated with this front. We will hit freezing again Saturday morning. Then we warm up and we start to see some rain in here. We may have an extended period of some rain too, so that's encouraging. That's talking about next week. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Marquez, what's going on, sir? All right, Mike, seen a couple of things pop up over the past 10 minutes or so, so let's get right to it as we take you outside. Trans guy traffic cameras taking a look here at 35 North at uh, Loop 410, and that's actually an area we want to focus on right now. So on the northeast side, looking at a stalled vehicle being reported 35 southbound at Thousand Oaks. So the camera we just saw right now was that was traffic coming uh, from 35 southbound. So that direction was coming our way. Obviously, we got traffic moving through this area, but something that uh, to keep in mind for our drivers on the northeast side, if you are coming into parts of 410 and getting into a little bit closer to the uh, downtown San Antonio area. One other spot that we're seeing here, a little bit of a trouble spot now uh, building out here in the far west side. So if you live around the SeaWorld area, you're going to be driving out, heading out to uh, either maybe take the kids early or head out to work at this time. Keep this in mind. We have a stalled vehicle being reported on the eastbound lanes of 151 at Wiseman Boulevard. And uh, you can see we are starting to see some traffic build up to 1604. So our drivers on the far west side, SeaWorld area, just keep this in mind if you're going to be headed out right now. Let's take a look at the city map. And you do see a lot of green on the screen here, so that's good news. Nothing like we saw yesterday, so that's good. Uh, most of our roads here are dry, so that's uh, but so that's some positive news this morning. Uh, I just checked right now TxDOT's page. It looks like we have another incident on the south side at uh, 410 and South End Road. So I'll go ahead and uh, check on that here in just a bit and just kind of give you any more updates as we be get them or as they become available to us. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. The temperature in writing may feel a lot different in reality. Once you step outside, be prepared for a very cold, teeth-chattering wake-up call. Katrina Weber is live out in it right now, downtown area. How are people handling it? Well, it's definitely not something we're used to in these parts. With the MLK holiday behind us, though, some people, like me, have no choice but to go back outside. Now, we actually saw some people on their way to work early this morning trying their best to keep warm while waiting for their buses. Duty calls, and even if the weather is bitterly cold, they say they have to answer. Everyone I talked to this morning told me their secret weapon for handling this type of cold is to dress in layers. It was colder, so I got two jackets. I got one of those, and I got this one. <laughs> yeah. Two jackets and gloves. <laughs> and that, I see. Yes, ma'am, and a beanie. Now, that's my secret weapon, too. I have five layers on, I believe, and it's not just the jackets and the sweaters and all of the clothing. It's the hats and the gloves, too. Keep that in mind if you have children who will be outside waiting for the school buses this morning. And just remember that being exposed to weather like this, cold like this, it can uh, turn from being just dis un uncomfortable, from discomfort into a potentially dangerous health situation very quickly. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you so much, Katrina. Stay warm. And we have been watching notifications from local school districts about any delays or closures. You can find that list by scanning this QR code on your screen or by going to KSA.com. So far, Burbank High School, Three Rivers, Carrizo Springs, Goliad, and Blanco ISDs will be closed today. Now, Edgewood ISD, Stratford Elementary is also closed this morning. And Harper, Comfort, Catula, and Fredericksburg ISDs are just a few of the districts on a delayed start. We're going to continue to keep track of any closures or delays that might come in. And right now we're taking a look at the CPS energy outage maps, a live look at outages around our region. According to their website, there are currently three outages affecting about 90 customers. Thankfully, there have been no widespread outages so far today due to this 
extremely cold weather. And a reminder, ERCOT is once again asking all of us to try to conserve electricity. The state's power regulator says they are expecting tight grid conditions due to the freezing temperatures across the Lone Star State. They're asking people to conserve between the hours of 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. this morning. ERCOT is also expecting similar grid conditions tomorrow. Outreach teams have spent the last few days driving around the county offering rides to shelters for people experiencing homelessness. Now we got a look at Corazon Ministries Day, Ministries Day Center where they usually have 150 people each day. Yesterday they had over 225. Now people there got warm clothing, hot meals and could sit and watch movies as they escaped the bitter cold. The center is open from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. and then clients head to a number of overnight shelters across the county. One man that our crews talked with said the outreach team saved his life on Monday morning. I was frozen on the sidewalk and they stole my shoes. He got me shoes and he, he, got, he got me set up in here for right now too because it was really, really cold. And if you don't need to go to a shelter, but you need a place where you can go and stay warm for a little while, the city has set up warming centers around town and they are offering free rides to get there. Via passengers may travel fare free to or from the 14 facilities that are open each day until 5 p.m. The city also has some resilience hubs open. Those are different from warming centers because they provide basic supplies and shelter from the cold. On top of that, Bear County has overnight warming centers. You can see a full list of all those locations on our website, KSAT.com. Just scan that QR code on your screen. And don't forget, warming shelters have extended hours to help those without a place to escape the cold. Last night, our John Bob Barbara has joined those groups as they hit the streets. Are you, Sunshine? I'm so proud of you. You still have the foil blanket. You want some soup? Guadalajara Ministries and other nonprofits take to the streets every time the weather drops to dangerous levels. We have lives out there, you know, that are struggling mental health, substance use, no support, no love, don't trust anybody. Guadalajara's Day Center Director Brittany Ackerson leads one of many efforts to get those without shelter into a warm place to stay. You want to go overnight? You want to go to Travis Park? Wherever, yeah. Wherever okay, go hold on just a minute. Ackerson then works with other nonprofits and shelters to find an opening. I have two right here off of um, San Pedro and 410 that want to go inside. But getting those who are experiencing homelessness indoors isn't always that easy. If you're not too cold, man. Yes, sir, I am. Because you don't want to go inside at night. I, I got too much stuff, you know. I dealt with it firsthand. And in situations like this. How cocoa when uh, ramen noodles coming your way? Oh, man, that's a blessing. Thank you. Volunteers provide anything to keep people warm. You got hand warmers? All oh, right, thank you. That's an extra one. Okay. Here's another blanket. And here you go too, man. Those hand warmers run out. We got you some gloves. Oh man, that's what I need is for many of those choosing to stay in the cold. It's not their first go around. How do you guys make it through the night? <laughs> well, I mean, we cuddle. <laughs> With lots of love, we make it through the night and lots of prayer. But they say they wouldn't be able to get through these tough times if it wasn't for people willing to help. Her energy is, is, is exciting, so it's, it's great to have people like her. To have people that don't judge. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Before we go to break, we can't forget about our animals in this cold weather. If you don't bring them in, you could get a big fine. In a social media post, Animal Care Services said it would, quote, have zero tolerance for weather-related violations in San Antonio. Anyone who breaks pet laws can have their pet taken away and be fined up to $2,000. And you can look for complete weather coverage on KSAT.com. And the time now is 6.40 and a very cold 18 degrees right now. January is National Blood Donor Month, and there's a new campaign to raise the supply here in Texas. Just ahead, how you can help and save some lives. We are fast approaching quarter to seven. Now to something we keep reminding you about, the need for blood. That's right. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center says the need for blood in our area is critically low. As producer Haley Powers reports, they have a new initiative in the hopes of bringing in even more donors. The need for blood is dire. That's why the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center is hoping you will step up. They say they are at a two-day supply and would like to be at a three- to five-day supply of blood. To help get more donors in, the center is starting a new campaign called Commit for Compassion. Their goal? For everyone in our community to donate four times a year. If we had everybody donate at least two times a year, we, it would make a significant impact to the blood supply. So by donating four times a year, we would literally end the blood shortage. The center says you can donate every eight weeks. 
but they say fear is one of the main reasons people don't. Most people don't donate because they're afraid. And we really try to make the process as easy as possible. When you get to your appointment, a health screening will take place before you donate. That takes about 10 minutes. It also takes about 10 minutes to do the actual blood donation process. Altogether, the entire donating process will take about 30 minutes. Haley Powers, KSAT 12 News. You can learn more about donating blood on our website at ksat.com. <laughs> and then you know going to be in that shot. Yeah, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> the benefits of arriving early, Mike. Yes. I know. Yes. yes. Yes, we're going to talk to Mike in just a minute, but for now, let's check in with RJ. All right, guys. Yeah, starting to see things pick up. We figured that with people getting back to school and work after the MLK Day holiday. So one quick look here at TransGap before we get to our maps. You see traffic moving pretty good here on the northeast side. 1604 at Pat Booker. See if we get one more there. This is the far west side, uh, 1604 at Shanefield Road. And that's actually where we're seeing kind of our biggest thing right now. So taking a look at 151 eastbound at Wiseman Boulevard, we have a stalled vehicle, but uh, 151 is always a very heavily traveled uh, thoroughfare in our area. So you see it is causing a pretty good backup here uh, to 1604 right now. Now there are no trans guide cameras in this area here. So we're just kind of going off the maps at this point. But uh, for anyone that lives or drives around the SeaWorld area, if you are headed out, keep in mind that eastbound 151 Wiseman, we are seeing a pretty good backup there. Uh, going to the south uh, east side, south side, southeast side, uh, we did find that stalled vehicle. It's being reported there on the westbound lanes of Loop 410 at South End Road. Traffic is moving um, pretty good in that area, though. So we've been talking throughout the morning about just how bitterly cold it is. And uh, one thing that uh, in speaking with TxDOT and also just with TransGuide and the city about uh, water runoff, they want to make sure that you do not turn your sprinklers on uh, this morning or also you need to check irrigation systems, pipes. Ice obviously can cause dangerous situations for roads, sidewalks, and can also cost you a lot of money for repairs. That's oh, also yes. true. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so if you see a place that uh, is turned into an icy mess due to an irrigation break or a pipe break, let us know. Email us news at ksat.com. One place we know there was some water in the overnight hours was up in Bernie, and you're not going to be surprised by the oh, location. Yeah. This was at an HEB car wash. Take a look at this. There it, it is. is. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that picture was sent to us by a guy we used to work with named uh, Kevin Heisen. Kevin, he was up there you. in the wee hours of this morning. But are you guys surprised at all? Uh, no, no, but no. it's kind of funny to look at. He, somebody wrote, uh, I posted this earlier, somebody wrote on Facebook, and yet someone will still go inside HEB and go, can I get a car wash? <laughs> <laughs> Well, if they didn't see this, maybe, I know. maybe for some purchase. No, even after happen. seeing this stuff. No. <laughs> and there's another there's view. No yeah. way. Well, can I go in there just to see what it's like, I guess? And maybe. Mike is looking at this going, yeah, that was my childhood in Michigan. Now, I wonder how long that takes to thaw out, though. I know, that's some right? thick ice on there. So, you know, you're talking about leaving sprinkler systems on or something. Somebody sent a uh, KSAC Connect picture, which, I mean, this is exactly what we're talking about. Somebody left the sprinklers on at the oh, entrance yeah. of their neighborhood up there in Con and all that thick ice on those plants right there. So it's going to take a while for all that to uh, to definitely melt. Thank you very much for the uh, the KSAC Connect picture. All right, gorgeous. Uh, we've got a good looking sunrise. It's going to be on tap today out there at the airport. Everything is moving along very well. No iced over cameras, so that's good news. Of course, we've got to emphasize the wind chills out there. Two at Bernie stage, two below Lost Maples. This is what it actually feels like, so definitely bundle up. When you, uh, you know, for the little kids standing out at the bus stop, something and and wear a scarf if you can over their face, just because that that wind is so biting out there. So, all right, let's look at the six to ten day climate prediction center, and this is leaning towards. So this is next week, and odds leaning toward the uh, the wetter side. So this is very encouraging, and temperatures slightly above normal. Now this is when uh, starting on the 21st is when we get out of the historically coldest time of the year, 63 being the normal high temperature, 41 being the normal low. So a little bit on the above normal side. Also, then going into the end of the month, leaning toward having wetter than normal conditions and a little bit warmer than normal. So if we could get some, some decent rain, that would just be obviously a, a godsend around here. This is what it looks like. So here's the big batch of Arctic air that's covering the northern portion of the country. This is what we are in right now. Things start to modify a little bit. These upper level wind lines become a little bit more straight west to east. So we're not going to be, you know, that Arctic air gets on out of here. Now, Thursday into Friday, we get a quick shot of some colder air coming down here. This will be 
at the surface. The really cold stuff stays up there to the north of us. And over the weekend, we start off cold on Saturday, get milder on Sunday. Then the next big trough starts to influence things, and that's going to throw some, some moisture in here. And this is when the rain chances start later Sunday into Monday. And that low is going to kind of set up shop just to the west of us. And so in this configuration, this is why Climate Prediction Center does look at and, and is showing uh, odds of having above normal precipitation going into next week. So again, very encouraging for that. Now today, 35 degrees, we'll just barely make it above freezing. Still, you want to bundle up and then another very cold morning again tomorrow down to 19. We will make it up to 45 in the afternoon. Stay above freezing Thursday. Next front moves through here. Got to emphasize it is going to be coming through dry. No moisture with that front we will be in the mid 20s Saturday warmer on Sunday or not as cold. I should say then the rain starts to work its way in here and next week we have above normal temperatures add a little bit above normal mid 60s mid 40s and those rain chances. Boy, if we could get some some rain to finish up then January that would be absolutely perfect. Yes, rain when it's not freezing cold. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take that. Thank you, Mike. 651, 18 degrees. Restaurant week is underway here in the Alamo City. And tomorrow on GMSA, the impact it's having on the community and how you can get involved. Outside with live cam, we could definitely call this. Well, no, that's actually the camera at the airport. I was going to show you the, the winter uh, sunrise. It yeah, is absolutely beautiful. Yeah. RJ will have a better look from Transguy cameras. 655 now on your Tuesday morning, taking you outside Transguide cameras. You see traffic in many parts of the city moving pretty good. This is a big difference from yesterday. Oh, we just saw right there. Look at this. This just popped up. Okay, kind of get the latest and give you more during our seven o'clock hour. Uh, but again, a big difference from yesterday where we saw a lot of collisions, crashes, especially in the southeast part of town. Uh, we are pretty much smooth sailing in a lot of parts. This is big, basically our biggest trouble spot we're looking at. 151, the eastbound lanes at Wiseman Boulevard. Traffic now backing up to 16 for even getting up to Calabria Road, so something that uh, our drivers near SeaWorld need to be aware of if they're heading out right now. Loop 410 westbound have stalled vehicle there, but uh, traffic is still kind of getting through that area. So that's good news, guys. Again, biggest thing, roads are dry for the most part. So uh, yeah, big difference from yesterday. <laughs> yeah, here's the sunrise Mark was talking about or the early stages of it. It is glorious out there. Don't let that deceive you because it's cold. 19 in town, 15 Kerrville Comfort, 16 Bernie Stage, wind chill temperatures. Most areas single digits right now and below zero is what it feels like at Lost Maples. Wind chill advisory through tomorrow morning, hard freeze warning through tomorrow morning. We will barely get above freezing later on today. Dress warm, stay warm. One more day of this really cold stuff. Yeah, people are like, Mike, make it go away. Make it go away. <laughs> yes, we're ready. There's the sunrise.